Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 48. It's on contact forces, which is kind of a misleading term, because if you know anything about physics, there are four fundamental forces in nature. We've got gravity, we've got electromagnetic force, we've got strong and weak nuclear forces. And in all of these, nothing is really touching. So when we talk about a contact force, we're really dealing with electric charge or electromagnetism at a close level. And so AP Physics 1, you should understand a number of contact forces, like the normal force. If this object sits on a table, the table is exerting a normal force which is perpendicular to the table. Or if we have this object hanging from a string, there's a tensional force. Or by a spring, we have a spring force that's applying a force both up and down. Or we could apply a force, we call that an applied force to the object, and we move it across the table. But there's going to be a force that opposes that motion, and we call that a frictional force. And in AP Physics 2, you should understand the importance of a buoyant force. If we put the object inside water, there's a buoyant force. In other words, the water is actually pushing on, all the, on that object. But in all of these situations, the objects aren't really touching. And so if objects quote-unquote touch, we call that a contact force. And what's causing that is interatomic interactions or forces between the atoms themselves. And I got a model that'll make this a little bit more clear. And so the number of contact forces you should understand are these six. And with each of them, you should understand what's the force and then what's the interatomic cause or dependency of that force. And then what direction is it going to act in? So this is a model that makes sense to me. Each of these blue spheres represents an atom, and then these dotted lines represent uh, bonds or chemical bonds between the atoms. But think of them almost like springs that are connecting all these atoms together, and then we have an object. And so what happens if I were to just push on it like this? So if I push on that atom right here, it's gonna change its shape. And so we're gonna start to get tension right here, tension in these bonds here, and so there's going to be a resisting force that's going to be in the opposite direction, like that. What would happen if I were to pull on that atom right here? It's going to stretch it out here. So we're going to have tension all along this way. And so what's going to be the responding force? It'd be in the opposite direction. Or let's say we were to push at an angle. If we push at an angle like that, so we're going to go like that. We're now going to have tension right here. Where's going to be the responding force? It's going to be in the opposite direction. And so in all the forces that I'm about to describe, it's the same interatomic cause. There's no difference between a normal force and a tension force and a buoyant force at the atomic level. It's all interactions between atoms. And so let's start with a normal force. If we have this red object on top of the blue, what it's going to look like if we look at the interatomic causes is we're going to have all of these red atoms resting on top of all of these blue atoms. And there are going to be electrons on, around the outside, and so it's literally hovering on top of the other one. But the direction, since we have the weight of the red object down, we're going to have a normal force that goes in the opposite direction like that. It's always going to be perpendicular, that's what normal means, to the platform on which it's sitting. So let's say we turn it like this. What's the interatomic cause? Well, we've just simply rotated the atoms. And so it's also going to be perpendicular, that normal force. What happens if we push on the object? So now we're pushing on it in this direction. What's going to happen at the atomic level? Now we've got the atoms of the hand pushing on the atoms of the object itself, and so we're going to have an applied force in that direction. Now what's happening if we look at it as it slides across the table? So this is a little bit different. Now we've got the atoms almost kind of a shearing effect, and so all these atoms are pushing in this direction on these atoms. And so what's going to be the responding force? We're going to have a frictional force that's going to oppose that movement. It's still interactions between the objects. What happens if we have an object hanging like this? If we look at it at the atomic level, we're applying a force, so the weight down, and we're adding tension all along these bonds within the rope itself. And so what's going to oppose that is a tensional force up. Let's say we look at a spring like this. Spring looks just like a rope, and so what we're going to do is we pull down on it. There's going to be a spring force up, but what's interesting about a spring force is if it moves and bounces up too high, then there will be a spring force, a restoring force, that brings it back towards equilibrium. Or let's say we take an object and drop it in water like this. Again, we're going to have a buoyant force. Now, how is this different? Well, the water is able to move. There's still going to be bonds between the water molecules, 
but it's able to kind of wrap around that object right here, it doesn't mean that it still isn't applying a force. It's applying what we call a buoyant force back on that object like that. And so it's going to be in the vertical. So did you learn to make claims about these contact forces? And can you explain it at the atomic level? Again, we're putting stress on these bonds and the objects are simply responding. So I hope that was helpful.